One of the easiest things you can do at home to make your gardening and mowing the lawn easy is putting in a really good garden edge. Now this here is called mini wall. These guys here with no lugs on the top are mini caps and together they can really define a space for you. And here we need a garden for privacy. Now if you don't have one, your lawn, if it's something like Kaikuyu or Buffalo, wants to grow in every direction. Meaning it wants to take over the garden bed and take all the nutrients and water that your plants want and vice versa. No garden edge, your plants grow out, shade your lawn, and then it starts to struggle. And the best thing about the mini wall is because of the way they're designed, they have a wide front and a narrow back, but they have the same face. So if you put them next to each other butt up, you can get nice straight lines. But if you flip them round, you can start to create curves. So you can get creative. How can we completely transform this area from this to this. What I've got here is a couple of stakes that I can run a string line and that's easy to do. Just measure off your fence, get the distance the same at both ends and it's parallel. And then I like to use a nice bright string line. Not because I like pink, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's so bright that you don't end up tripping over it. It's important that you have the same face at the front of this stake and the one up the other end. When I set the string line, I can pull it nice and tight. I could mark it out with paint if I wanted to, or if I keep it up a little bit higher, I can dig underneath it and not worry about cutting through this. And being 800 mil, I've allowed about 200 mil for my block and 600 mil for the garden bed. And that's plenty of garden bed for a hedge that we want to get to say two or three meters high. Now I'm just working on the footings. A good rule of thumb is you want them twice as wide as the wall that's going up. And that's gonna give us stability in the ground. And it also happens to be the width of the whacker. So I can put down road base, go over the top, compact it and make it nice and strong. Now what you need to think about. Okay, we're going into the ground, about 100 mil of road base compacted and then over the top, a damp mix of sand and cement, not wet, just damp, so you can screed it and get it nice and flat and level, and when you tap down your first block, it sits just in the top of it. It'll set over time and go nice and hard. But at the moment, I gotta go nice and hard. Where's the dog? You think he'd help? Now this is probably the most delicate part. You want to start level. If you start level, you'll finish level. Now coming off the bit that I've already done, if I go through the sand, cement mix, and get my spirit level level, and then once it's remotely right, you can grab your timber float. If there's any hollows, you can fill them in, and tap them down too. Not as hard as it looks. And laying the blocks, well, I reckon it's the easiest part. It's obviously the most rewarding. The straight ones, well, they're dead easy. You just alternate a small face and a large face, and that gives you a nice straight line. And then for the curve, the large face on the outside will give you a nice gentle curve. Actually, 21 of them will give you a complete full circle. And if you've got feature trees, it's great to put one around it. But all you need to do to make sure that you're starting level and finishing level is grab yourself a little spirit level, have a look down on it. At the moment, it's leaning back. So tap, 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 check again. That means every course that goes up from here will be level and I won't have to check it. How am I with that string line? I might come forward a touch. Perfect. <laughs> And this is the genius of the interlocking block. 
Done. Move on to the next one. Now the only two tips here, make sure the base and what you've already laid is nice and clean. So if you've got a little hand broom, it's a good start. But if you've got the bottom level, it's as easy as just making sure it's a stretcher bond, which is the same as like a brick house is built on, which gives it strength. Oh, this is fun. Putting the capping on is as simple as beading some liquid nails, I'm using the landscape version here, just across the front and the back of the lugs. Staggering the joint still. And if you've done a good job, you can lay them just by tapping your hand. We're on to the home straight, the soft landscaping, the fun bit. Now a really good tip here is put a little bit of soil behind your garden edge, then place everything out. Stand back and have a look, make sure it fits and looks right, and then backfill around them. And what you're finished with is a great little job that you can knock up in a weekend, but make a huge difference to your place. The plants and the mulch just set it off, and when the turf's in place, you've got a really defined boundary between the garden bed and the lawn meaning it's easier to mow the lawn and easy to keep your plants where they're meant to be. These lily pillies grown in a beautiful premium garden mix will grow twice as fast as something that's gone into hard compacted soil. And the mulch, well, no one likes weeding and mulch is the best suppressant for weeds. You know, if you ask a landscape designer, what's the most important thing to think about when you're designing your garden? They'll say it's the bones, where the paths go, where the driveway sits, the garden beds, the clothesline, the garbage bins, all the basics that you need to make a garden work for generations. Well, this here ticks a lot of those boxes. It gives this garden definition, it makes the lawn easy to look after, and it looks a million bucks. The nice charcoal, the concrete, looks fantastic against the greens of the lawn, and the plant. And you know that it's not going to move and fall down for generations, lifetimes. Now I've got to get back to the most important part of the job, watering. For more information on all my DIY projects, simply go to adbrymasonry.com.au. You can get all the fact sheets and download them from there. Plus, all the hints and tips you'll need to do the job. While you're there, check out our Inspirations Gallery. There's a ton of photos sure to inspire you to get out in the garden and do a job this weekend. Good luck. <laughs>